Our Lions on their way once again to try. They failed once with Wildebeest. They failed once with the Warthog. Are they going to be successful now that they are faced with much, well, let's face it, much nicer odds? There's an entire herd of a couple of hundred-ish Wildebeest and one or two Zebra thrown in for good measure. Our first lioness is off uh, creeping through the glass, and now we're going to do a Facebook as well. Hello and welcome to the Maasai Mara where we are sitting in the middle of the Great Migration with a couple of hundred wildebeest, a couple of zebra and two hungry lionesses. They've already failed two hunting attempts while we've been with them. Is this third one going to be successful? Remember all of this is happening right now, right here in one of Africa's most spectacular wilderness areas. Linus not keen on making the mistakes that she did earlier. They had a couple of wildebeest walk right past them, and they just left it that little bit too late to pounce. They're using the long grass as cover. You can see, look at the focus in her body. Ears back. Shoulder blades going. Intent with her body slung low but still quite confident in the way that she's striding forward. She's not creeping. She's almost swaying towards them. Here she goes, moving through the grass. That's a good girl. Stop, look, listen. Try and get an idea of exactly what it is you're faced with. The second lioness are coming up behind her. Now there is an unsuspecting zebra that is walking, oh it stopped now, was walking a direct path towards where the lions were aiming. Pam, I am quite astounded that they missed the earlier hunt. But yes, absolutely, it is amazing that they miss as often as they do. It, but it's only fair. This is, and I actually, I, I prefer it that way because it makes the whole process understandable. These lionesses have to work to catch their food, and when they do, it's hard to watch, but it's all part of the way that things function out here. But during the migration, when they do go on a hunt in the middle of a herd like this, they almost always catch something. And they almost always, I have to say, catch more than one something. Once this panic sets in and the wildebeest start to career around in a complete chaos, they find themselves basically running straight into the jaws of the lions. Which one is she targeting? The amazing thing is that the body language between these two lionesses have already picked out their victim. They probably already know which one they're going to go for. Directing each other with flicks of their ears. And they've got to watch. Every time a wildebeest lifts up its head, they freeze. Now we're going to take this opportunity because once this goes, it's going to go very, very quickly. We're actually going to take this opportunity to just get a little bit closer. Unfortunately, between me and them is a river system that's going to be quite difficult to get, though. But let's rather not miss a moment of this. Let's get as close as we can. And I'll figure out the logistics later. You can just see the tops of their heads peeking out. I wonder if I'll be able to cross this. Perhaps now would be a good time. Mm. The answer is no. I definitely won't be able to cross this, so what we'll do is we'll go backwards and get the advantage of height. They're straight ahead of us, I can still see them. Alright, I'm going to stop here. Just have a look and check and see if we can uh, find them once again. There they go. Oh, look at that. She's getting so close to that zebra now. It's hard to gauge the distance exactly but I would probably say around about 30 or so yards. She needs to be just that little bit closer, zebra fast. And once the zebra goes, 
It'll be that much harder to catch anything else. See the way she goes. Every time the zebra drops its head, she moves. Lifts his head, she freezes. Head down. Indistinguishable from the yellow grass. And forward. And freeze. NASCAR, there's no real preference here as to which they'd rather go for. They don't prefer wildebeest over zebra or anything else like that. Whichever's the closest, whichever's the most obvious victim. Advance and freeze. She's vanished. She's right there. We know she's there. We can just see the top of her head. The tricky part, of course, of being a lion stalking through the grass is that you can't see over the top. So she has to risk sticking her head up every now and again to make sure she's still walking in the right direction. Now it looks at this point like she's right on top of the zebra. I think she's probably, because the camera does compress slightly, she's probably about 20 feet, 20 yards away. I don't know where the second lioness is. So remember, there is a second lioness in play here. And once the hunt starts, it'll be completely explosive. She can't afford to waste time. Lions only have a certain amount of stamina. They can only sprint a certain distance. She can't afford to mess this up. Oh! Do you see how she disappeared like that? <laughs> that was almost comical. <laughs> it's always difficult, isn't it? To decide whose side you're on. The lion has to eat. The zebra wants to live. Perhaps it'll change my mind if I tell you that I think that this group of lionesses have cubs. But really, it's always... A complicated situation. And f as far as the zebra knew, it was just eating some grass. Enjoying its day. Possibly. Probably not in this wind. It's on to something. It's heard something. The hairs on the back of its neck are beginning to prickle. Something's not right, but what? Is it just the wind blowing in the grass? Or is there something else? Is the threat to the left? Or is it straight ahead? We can see the lioness, can you? There, just, just the tips of her ears sticking out. I barely can see her. How on earth is this poor zebra meant to? Yes, enjoy that mouthful of grass, mister. Because things are about to get very scary very quickly. I always talk about moments like this that you sort of end up holding your breath. The world doesn't seem to hold its breath, does it? It kind of, everything's just carrying on. The wildebeest are feeding. <laughs> the zebra's feeding. There's the lioness. I just saw her move. Let's go a little bit to the right, Manu, because if she does come out... Yeah, there we go, perfect. If she does come out, it's going to be from there. Now, Charlotte, you want to know if I think the zebra can smell anything? No, I don't think so. It's windy. That's why lionesses like to hunt in the wind. I can't even see her now. No, is that her there? That's her there. Oh. Hairs on the back of that zebra's neck. Something wasn't right. 
And would you look at that? The zebra lives to eat another blade of grass. She's not going to go for him now. Oh, oh, where is the second lioness, though? No, I think he's safe. <laughs> you have no idea, mister, just how fortunate you are. Because her attention has shifted now. Now it's time to check out the wildebeest. Now just bear with me one moment, because I can't stand not knowing any more. I cannot find that second lioness. I don't know where she's gone. Oh, there's a... There's a zebra coming to the right towards the lioness. Just a little while away. Penny Pine, as you say, well, if it's not the zebra, it will be another one. You couldn't be more right, absolutely. That is exactly the truth. If it's not the zebra, it will be the wildebeest. Here comes another zebra that's going to slowly but surely walk into her path. Nope, it's not going to be that zebra either. What are you waiting for, girl? What's the decided target? Another zebra? Perhaps Penny Pine in this case. <clears throat> it won't not be another zebra, but another wildebeest. Although I think... She's looking at that wildebe at that zebra fall. Easier target. Slightly slower. Slightly less of a kick. <laughs> no. The zebra fall. Lives to see another day. Now let's bear in mind that this is the same two lionesses that actually managed to miss a hunt or, in fact, failed to go for a hunt when the wildebeest practically walked over their tails. So I'm, I have to confess to being not entirely sure exactly what it is that they want. I don't know if the, if the wildebeest needs to have eat me stamped on its bottom, but so far they've, they've let one or two opportunities go straight past their noses. I am, of course, being facetious, because I'm sure they know their business far better than I do. Shayna, I think that there is more distance between the lioness and her prey than it looks. So the camera does compress the image ever so slightly, and I think essentially she's waiting for the opportunity where she knows her pounce is going to be successful. So she's waiting for them to get a little bit closer to her, essentially. Or she's waiting from a, for a sign from the second lioness. I, I honestly don't know. I mean, everything that we, we're suggesting is just that. It's a suggestion. I honestly don't know. All I know is that I picked the wrong side of the river system. But that's okay. We've still got a view. I don't know why she's hesitating. I think it's just not the right time. But also bear in mind that every single hunt expends a huge amount of energy for the lions. They can't afford to waste it just on any old hunt. You can barely tell she's there. It's utterly incredible how her camouflage hides her. Oh, has Manu spotted? Yep, yeah, you have. Bravo, Manu. Manu, for those of you who have joined us on the Facebook Lies, is on camera with me this afternoon. There are the two lionesses, barely visible, and in front of them, an entire buffet line has just gone wandering past. Perhaps it's like when you miss your bag at the airport at the baggage claim, and you have to wait until it goes all the way around again. Oh, 
I'm just watching to gauge exactly what else is coming their way. And I have to say, that zebra seemed like the best opportunity that's going to present itself to me. There's another possibility. There is one other possibility, and that is potentially that they're waiting until it's dark, or at least darker. That is where they truly have the advantage. The wildebeest eyesight is not fantastic at night. Theirs is. And therefore, if they wait just that little bit longer, have that little bit more patience, then the wildebeest will be more likely to panic and they'll be more likely to catch one, or two, or three. For one heart-stopping moment there, I thought that bird was a lion charging in, but it's not. The only sound is the sound of the wind in the grass, howling, stacking the odds in the lion's favor. So far, <clears throat> it's been mainly adult wildebeest walking past them. Are they going to aim for a youngster? change in motion, a change in pace, and flop. She just took an opportunity to get that little bit closer to her pride mate. Now we can see both of them together. The one on the left almost completely obscured by the grass. I don't think the lions draw the process out. Everything is about practicality. What is practical? What is most likely to result in a meal? The trick out here, of course, is to remember that nature works on her own time. So everything requires a little bit of patience, and then if you don't have patience out here, I can guarantee you are not going to see spectacular things unless you get very lucky. But if you do have patience out here, you will see extraordinary things. Here we go. You decided to rouse yourself from your s inertia. <laughs> She's so close to these wildebeest. Yes, it's about time you had a, a look around at what's happening. Look at this vast, empty space to your right. All those wildebeest that passed through. Oh, there's still more coming, though. And when I'm joking at the lioness, I'm, I'm not really seriously criticizing her because these lionesses are far better at this than I would ever be. Brenda? While I take a quick sip of water, the tension has created a dry throat. Mm. At the moment, there are only two lionesses. There were three when I first found them. The third has got a very, very painful looking limp, and she's been left behind. She would only be a liability in the hunt. The nice thing about lions, though, is that once they do kill, and mark my words, they are going to kill. This evening or tonight, they are going to kill something they will allow her to come and feed with them. So lionesses are not selfish. Oh, what you doing? This is no time to scratch an itch. Come on, you got work to do. Or maybe she's just thinking to herself she really needs to concentrate and she can't with that pesky bite on her cheek. Oh, there's a little one. She's immediately picked up on that. Oh, but, but looked away again. Don't you think it would be incredible to be in her mind? Imagine what it would be like to be in her mind right now, to experience everything that she's experiencing, how she's making her decisions, 
if she's making decisions, or if everything is pure instinct, what she's smelling, what she's hearing, what she's processing, how aware she is of her pride mate, how they're planning and communicating what they're going to do. Wouldn't it be incredible, just for one day, to be in a mind of an animal And still she waits. <laughs> Rishi, you say you've never seen a lion waiting for so long. Rishi, I'll tell you what she's doing. She's waiting for me to leave and go all the way around the drainage line and then back up the other side, which because I can't get across to where they are. And as soon as I switch on my engine and turn the vehicle around, she's going to hunt. That is Murphy's Law. That is what she's waiting for. The opportunity to present itself for me not to have the camera on her. And so as a result we find ourselves in a rather stubborn but battle of wills. I don't know what she's waiting for. As I said, they're not as close as they look. Let's put it that way. But why she hasn't tried to close that distance, I don't know. Perhaps she's already calculated the trajectories of the wildebeest further along away from the herd Ooh, speaking of trajectories that is a bad one little one no gone 